Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing should ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You're an obstacle to me. You're not thinking as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to their conduct. Hello and welcome to Closer Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father By, your host, and we're glad that you can join us. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You're an obstacle to me. You're not thinking as God does, but as human beings do. You know what I've always known? My mouth gets me in trouble. Don't ask me if you don't want to know. I mean, really. I'm not real good at bosses golfing. I'm not real good at passing out roses, okay? When our Lord said, you're not thinking as God does, you're thinking as human beings do, I probably would have said, and your point is, I'm not God, you are. Sure, I'm thinking like a human. I'm human. And I think a lot of us allow our humanity to be our excuse. We allow our humanity not to do the things we need to do. I'm going to recommend... For those of you who have a prayer life, and I hope you do, and I find it very, very powerful, a uh, prayer in front of the Blessed Sacrament, I'm going to recommend you do this one day. Go to the Adoration Chapel. Close your eyes and say, Lord, help me to see me as you see me. That may be one video you don't want to watch, okay? That may be one mirror you don't want to look into. And, but I think it's important. <laughs> if I start to think how God sees me, uh, there are times where that's very consoling. There, there are times where he looks at his head and just shakes his head. You know, one of the things that I, you know, I look at in my life, and I say, you know, you have been so blessed. You really, really have been blessed. I mean, look at the family God gave you, and look at the opportunities God has given you, and look at the abilities God has given to you. I mean... You are really sitting in gravy. I mean, God has been so good. And then when I come face to face with my own sinfulness, come on, stupid. After everything God has done for you, you're going to still turn away from God and say that? You're going to still turn away from God and do that? You know, when do you get to the point where you realize it's a gift. It's all a gift. 
And it's time for me to quit pay, start paying back and quit asking for more and start giving back. You know, one of the things that uh, recently has amazed me is all these young radicals out in the street who are out there protesting in their designer clothes, right? They're protesting. Now, they don't look fashionable. You know, they look shabby chic. You know, they, they, they look like the grunge. But it costs a lot of money to look like the grunge. You hear me? And they're out here, you know, and the country's wrong and the country's corrupt and we're all white races and it's all white privilege and everything. And, and you just go, you know, your mom and daddy never made you work for a damn thing in your whole life, did they? You've never had to struggle like so many people have had to struggle. You've never had to work for it. You've never had to wonder about where the meal came from. You've never had to, what's going to happen if I lose my job? You've never had to do any of that. And now you're out there with your little pampered butts telling us how we need to live our lives. I wonder if we don't look like the diapered group in the sight of God, having been given so much, having been given so much, and yet still being upset because this didn't happen, or being upset because I've got this illness, or being upset because I didn't get this job. I, I, I think there's a real, real grace to praying for not only being able to see myself as God sees me, but I think we need to pray to be able to see the world as God sees me. I was telling my friends here in the audience this, this morning as we got in, and I, I could tell you everything I told them because I got a little crew, but, um, you know, I don't do Facebook, I don't tweet, I don't do Twitter. I don't read blogs on the internet. As far as I'm concerned, it's nothing more than shared ignorance for people who've got no one else to listen to them. So they think their opinion is something the whole, whole world wants to know. But what is striking to me and I'm doing, I'm uh, filming this show during the virus. What's striking to me is how many people have their opinion and everyone else has to live with it. And you have that on both sides. You have that on both sides of the coin. And it's like, hey man, chill. These people are scared. Let them do what they want to do. Let them, you know, you know, keep sanitizing the hand, let them wear a mask covering everything. I don't care. I need to respect. They're really afraid. I really need to respect that. I can't force myself on everybody else. And one of the things that I find is that we live in a world where my perspective is the only perspective that matters. And in doing so, the way we look at people, the way we judge people, the combative nature in which we approach people, that's when I need to see the world and see people as God sees people. If they're angry, what are they angry about? For God's sakes, it can't be about a mask. It can't be about that. If you're angry, I mean, really angry because I'm white. I'm not really white, I'm Lebanese. But anyway, you know, I, what, are you, what are you so mad about? Why is the world so angry about everything and everyone? I think if we decided that we wanted to see others as God sees others, you know, most of us are pretty good that if there's a natural disaster, 
there's something gone wrong and they need food and they need clothes and they need shelter. And they, you know, we're a really wonderful, generous people. And we can give them stuff. More often than not, these angry people out there that you can't talk to, they need more than stuff. They need someone to understand where they're coming from. Not to agree with them, but there's something missing in their life when someone else's color just makes you angry. There's someone else, something missing in someone's life when someone else's political persuasion just makes you angry. You know, why, you know, and I'm not pulling a Rodney King, can't we just all get along? I'm not doing that. I'm saying that we need to learn to see people as God sees people with the anger, the hurt, everything that's going on, everything that's going into this. We need to see God's people and ask God to give us the grace rather than hear their rhetoric, rather than hear their craziness. Lord, give me the grace to see these people in this situation the way you see it. Let me bring you into this situation. Don't let me bring my emotions, because when my emotions get launched, I'm a mess, I'm stupid, you know? Let me bring you into this situation. Let me see all these people are so angry and see that they're hurting, they're really hurting. I don't think what they're yelling about is what they're hurting them for, but they're really hurting, okay, Lord? And give me that grace. I've said this, and I said it a few weeks ago. You know what the issue is? Everybody's worrying about their own little bailiwick. No one's asking that we need to be a nation under God. No one's asking us to look at other people and see they're made in the image and likeness of God. Even through the shouts of their angry mask, we're made in the image and likeness of God. And that's what we need to understand. And asking God to give me the grace, first of all, to see me as he sees me. And I'm going to have a mirror that's uncomfortable. And secondly, ask me to see the world and the people surrounding me in this world as he sees them. And rather than bring more anger, more emotion into the situation, Lord, let me bring you into this situation. And if they shout me down for knowing you, if they shout me down for loving you, if they shout me down for acknowledging you, still let me bring you into that situation and not my emotions. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bay from Closer Walk Catholic Communications. Thank you for being here today. And a special thanks for the support that you give us. First of all, your prayerful support we so desperately need, and also your financial support. We are donor-driven, and that is what keeps us on the air today. As you well know, the truth is in great demand and in very short supply, and mainstream media is not going to bring you the truth of the Gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ because that's not socially acceptable and it's not politically correct. Certainly, we all realize that when this life journey is over, we don't stand before the Supreme Court. We stand before the throne of God. Therefore, with great clarity and great charity, to pronounce the truth of the gospel is important. Your prayers, your financial support enables us to do that. So we thank you, and may God bring you closer in your walk with the Lord each day. God bless you. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. But what profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. Hello and welcome back to Closer Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father Bayer, your host. Who writes stuff like this, man? 
This doesn't belong in the, you know, the 21st century. What are they talking about? Denying yourself, sacrificing, losing yourself, you know, not trying to gain the whole world. Who writes this stuff? That's the point. That's the point. Now, more than ever, the gospel message is countercultural. One of the great joys of my life for about 10 or 12 years was being able to do my priestly annual retreat in Dublin, Ireland with Father Kevin Scallon and Sister Breeze McKenna. It was called the Intercession for Priest. And in there, they had a lot of older Irish priests who literally, the Irish church has catechized the world. These men had been missionaries in all, I mean, countries I'd never heard of. They'd gone out, they'd lived in the bush, they'd lived with no electricity, they'd lived with no mail, they'd cooked on wood fires, and, and, and these men were just incredible. You know, I enjoyed the retreat, but listening to these men was my inspiration. You know, I think if my cable goes out, I'm aggravated, okay? And I look at these men and see what sacrifice have been made. And I'm not talking about hundreds of years ago. I'm talking about these men who are still alive in the last 40, 50 years of their life. They've lived this way and they've done this. I'm talking about the religious sisters I have working in our home for children who've been trafficked and listening to insults and learning words they've never heard before and at times even being pushed around by the children and still loving them every day and every night and still forgiving them and still working on them. Who does this? The people who long to see the face of God. Taking up your cross and follow me. In each one of the three synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they all have that synoptic meaning they're synonymous. They all tell the same stories. They just got little different details. And of course, Matthew and Mark say, anyone who wants to be my disciple must take up his cross and follow me. And then Luke says, anyone who wishes to be my disciple must take up his cross daily and follow me. And what does it mean to daily live with the cross? I think people in 12-step recovery know that. Realizing that you know what the first step is? Without God, I'm powerless. So if you're in 12-step recovery and you know that if you take one more drink, you may never stop drinking. You do one more pill, one more joint, one more whatever. You may never stop. Whatever your addiction might be, you realize I'm carrying this cross of addiction. And it's only by the grace of God that I can handle it. You know, and I've, I've had people, just some really incredible people, watching older couples take care of one another. The days of passion are long past. You know, the having a good time, the idea of your spouse being able to pay you back or to compliment you or to, to help you, that's long gone. And some days they don't even know who you are. And you here you are helping them on and off the toilet. 
and they turn and say, who are you? And these people keep loving them. These people keep doing for them. You know, these people understand. And that ability to love, you know, love is great. I, when, you, when you're young and you're passionate and you're healthy and everything, oh boy, we're having a great time. And that's wonderful. But you know what? And, and I've oftentimes, and I had one couple in particular, very first time I went there, I was new in the parish, knocked on the door, and I heard someone yell, we'll be there in a minute. And after a while, I see this old skinny white man come to the door, and he's got on his, his swimming suit, and he's all wet. We'll be right back. And he comes back 15 minutes later. He's dressed, and his wife, who had had a stroke and kind of you know, had a palsy going on and couldn't hold her head up and everything, he had dressed her, fixed her hair, put on her makeup, and she looked wonderful. And he said, isn't she beautiful? Isn't my baby beautiful? Long story, you know, they, they had one child. That child died when he was 27, leaving a wife and three children. And this little couple, they, they were so wonderful. And every year what I would do is on Christmas Eve, I'd go give communion between the vigil and midnight mass. And they were always my last couple. And they'd already be in bed, so I'd go crawl up in bed with them and give them communion. And he always used to laugh, you're the only other man I'll ever let get in bed with my wife, okay? It was a big joke. But I watched that couple and I said, you know, the heck with all these pre cana programs. I need to bring young couples here and let them watch this couple. It's great to tell you how to manage your finances and you know how to talk nice to each other and how to have meaningful intimacy and all that. This is where we really find the example of taking what God gives and giving what God takes and doing with great joy. And I think that understanding is for all of us that the things that we have sacrificed the most for are the things that we love the most. I'll take you know, a great example. You know, my older brother and I got, got a car from my parents. It was secondhand from my older brother, but man, we thought it was great leaving rubber on the road. We weren't paying for the tires, okay? Then finally, we had cut grass long enough to afford to be able to buy a $350 1963 Rambler Ambassador with, with no back seat in it. And, you know, that was, it had a little R on the front. We called it our rolls. When we paid $350 for that secondhand car, you better not leave rubber on the road. You better take care of that. And we washed it and polished it, did all that stuff. When you make sacrifice, you understand what it means. When you're not willing to make sacrifice, you'll never come to know God. And if you make sacrifice and just think I'm being very noble here and doing the right thing, you ain't going to last. You're not. But if you make sacrifice and turn to God, you look at the crucifix and you realize the last thing he said was, Lord, forgive them. They know not what they do. When you look at what he went through for us, you know what? The little things that we do, and maybe they're difficult and maybe they're inconvenient and maybe you wish you didn't have them. But by the grace of God, we, we come to learn what everything means. As we see our society somewhat now turning anti-religious, I think that was a freedom we took for granted. We can go to church. We can do all these things. And now you see these little pampered punks, you know, tearing down statues and cutting down the Blessed Mother's head and, you know, trying to destroy churches. If we've never paid a price for it, 
we don't understand what it's worth. Whether that's our life, whether that's our faith, whether that's our ability to understand the gift that we've had. If you, if you came close to dying, you know what life means. Don't wait till you get to that point. Understand the sacrifice Christ has made for us and make it part of your daily life. We thank you for being with us. May each day bring you close in, in your walk with the Lord. God bless. Jesus Christ, when you walked the earth, you traveled the countryside through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness among the people. At your command, all who approach you in illness were made well, made whole. Now, Lord, we implore you to blanket our world with your love and your healing presence. Open the hearts of all to turn back to you in their hearts and to seek you in all things. We pray that for all who have been infected, and affected by the coronavirus may find their strength in you. For those who have died may find their rest in you. Guide the leaders of all nations to work together for the family of man, working to help all in need out of love for all mankind. Give grace, courage, and strength to all medical professionals who put their well-being in harm's way for the sake of others. We pray for your guidance through the waters of uncertainty and for a sense of your presence as we place our trust in you. Gracious God and Father, may this crisis bring your healing presence to a wounded world so that mentally, spiritually, and physically we may return to you in all things. Amen. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bay from Closer Walk Catholic Communications. Thank you for being here today, and a special thanks for the support that you give us. First of all, your prayerful support we so desperately need, and also your financial support. We are donor-driven, and that is what keeps us on the air today. As you well know, the truth is in great demand and in very short supply, and mainstream media is not going to bring you the truth of the Gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ because that's not socially acceptable and it's not politically correct. Certainly we all realize that when this life journey is over, we don't stand before the Supreme Court, we stand before the throne of God. Therefore, with great clarity and great charity, to pronounce the truth of the Gospel is important. Your prayers, your financial support enables us to do that. So we thank you, and may God bring you closer in your walk with the Lord each day. God bless you. Thank you.